In any potential conflict around the Baltic Sea, it will not be the arrival of frigates or destroyers that determines the outcome of the first engagements, but rather which side can bring its coastal missile launchers into play fastest. Coastal anti-ship missiles have quietly become one of the most decisive instruments of military power in Northern Europe, turning seemingly quiet stretches of coastline into lethal ambush zones. These systems are relatively cheap compared to large naval vessels, highly mobile, and capable of delivering precise strikes against ships hundreds of kilometers away. For small states facing a larger naval adversary, they offer a way to deny access and impose costs without having to match the adversary ship for ship. The strategic context explains their growing importance. The Baltic Sea is a confined body of water, dotted with islands, and connected to the North Sea by narrow straits. Whoever can control or deny access to key areas like the Danish Straits or the island of Gotland can effectively shape the balance of power across the region. For NATO allies like Poland, Sweden, and Denmark, coastal missile batteries are tools of deterrence against Russian naval power based in Kaliningrad, and the Northern Fleet. For Russia, systems like the Bastion deployed in Kaliningrad or along the Arctic coast are ways of projecting threat and complicating NATO reinforcement. In this theater, where geography favors ambush and choke points, the ability to rapidly target ships from the shore is strategically decisive. Technologically, Three families of systems dominate the conversation today. The Norwegian-made NSM, Sweden's RBS-15, and Russia's Bastion Onyx. Each represents a different design philosophy with distinct strengths and weaknesses. The Naval Strike Missile, developed by Kongsberg, is subsonic but stealthy using sea-skimming profiles and an imaging infrared seeker in its terminal phase. Its effective range is over 180 kilometers, and it can be launched from both ships and mobile coastal defense batteries. The NSM's selling point is its ability to discriminate targets even in cluttered littoral environments, reducing the chance of being spoofed by decoys. It has already been adopted widely across NATO, from Poland to Denmark to the United States, creating commonality and scale of production. The RBS-15, produced by Saab, is Sweden's long-standing answer to the same problem. The newest variants offer ranges over 200 kilometers, with inertial navigation, GPS updates, and an active radar seeker in the terminal phase. The Swedish armed forces have signed contracts to modernize their coastal defense units with updated RBS-15 launchers, reflecting the priority Stockholm places on littoral deterrence. The RBS-15 family is versatile. It can be launched from ships, aircraft, or truck-mounted coastal systems. Its long endurance and sea-skimming terminal approach make it a threat to any surface vessel that comes within its envelope. On the Russian side, the Bastion Coastal Defense System armed with the P-800 Onyx missile is a different beast altogether. Unlike NSM or RBS-15, the Onyx is supersonic with speeds up to Mach 2.5 and ranges reported between 300 and 500 kilometers depending on variant. Fired from mobile launchers, a salvo of Onyx presents defenders with a drastically reduced reaction time. These systems are already deployed in Kaliningrad, in Crimea, and in the Arctic, forming part of Russia's broader anti-access area denial doctrine. In exercises, Russia has demonstrated salvos that could threaten naval groups far out at sea. Their presence forces NATO navies to assume that any transit within the Baltic could be under missile threat within minutes. 
The effectiveness of all these systems depends on the kill chain, the sequence from detection to command and control to launch to impact. For a coastal battery to be effective, it must first know where the target is. That requires sensors such as maritime patrol aircraft, drones, satellites, or over-the-horizon radar. Next comes the command system that must quickly validate the target and authorize a strike. Then the mobile launcher, often truck-mounted, must be in position, dispersed, and ready to fire. Finally, the missile itself must penetrate defenses and strike the intended ship. Break any link in that chain, jam the radar, disrupt the data link or target the launcher, and the system is blunted. Conversely, if the kill chain functions smoothly, even a small battery can impose existential threats on billion-dollar warships. Defenders are not without options. Modern surface combatants carry layered air defenses like ESSM, SM-2, or CIWS guns to intercept incoming missiles. Electronic warfare can jam seekers or deploy decoys. Land-based air defenses like Patriot or NASAMS can cover some approaches. Offensive countermeasures include targeting the missile batteries themselves with precision strike aircraft, drones, or long-range artillery before they can relocate. Yet the problem is complex. Mobile launchers can hide in forests or along coastlines, pop up to fire, and then vanish. The cat and mouse game becomes one of endurance. Can the attacker suppress enough batteries to open a safe corridor before running out of munitions or exposing ships to risk? To illustrate, imagine a 48-hour scenario in the Baltic. A NATO naval group moves through the Central Baltic on its way to reinforce Estonia. Polish coastal defense units equipped with NSM are deployed along the shore. Russian surveillance assets detect the task group and relay data to a bastion unit near Kaliningrad. Within minutes, Onyx missiles are launched. The NATO ship's Aegis radars detect the supersonic threat launch interceptors, and some missiles are destroyed, but one penetrates and disables a frigate. In parallel, the NATO task group detects Polish NSM launchers queuing in on Russian corvettes near Gotland. A salvo of subsonic NSMs, flying low and stealthy, strike and sink a Russian patrol ship. The result is a mutual exchange where both sides lose assets rapidly. Political leaders now face the choice of escalation or negotiation. This scenario highlights the volatility of coastal missile warfare. The margin between deterrence and open naval combat is razor thin. From a strategic standpoint, the proliferation of coastal anti-ship missiles is reshaping Northern Europe's security environment. For small states, they are a cost-effective deterrent, able to raise the stakes for any aggressor. For NATO as a whole, they offer a way to complicate Russian naval planning and buy time for reinforcements. For Russia, they provide a way to threaten NATO's lines of communication and maintain leverage despite having a smaller surface fleet. But the very attributes that make them attractive, low cost, high mobility, and lethal effect, also make them destabilizing. In a crisis, the temptation to launch a preemptive strike with coastal missiles could be strong, knowing that waiting might mean losing launchers to enemy counterfire. Looking forward, several trends stand out. First, the integration of sensors and data links will matter as much as the missiles themselves. Without timely and accurate targeting, even the best missile is useless. Second, the industrial base is becoming critical. 
Rhine Metal and other European firms are investing in ammunition plants precisely because coastal systems consume missiles rapidly in conflict and resupply must be assured. Third, counter UAS and cyber defenses must be linked to these systems since drones and electronic attacks are the natural way adversaries will try to break the kill chain. Finally, policymakers need to recognize that controlling escalation will be difficult in a theater saturated with mobile, long-range strike systems. Exercises, confidence building and clear communication may be necessary to prevent accidental escalation. In conclusion, Coastal anti-ship missiles like the NSM, RBS-15, and Bastion are transforming the Baltic into a chessboard where every coastline is a potential launch pad and every ship is a potential target. They embody the shift from conventional fleet engagements to dispersed, networked strike systems. For NATO and Russia alike, the question is not whether these weapons will be decisive, but whether their presence will deter conflict or make it more likely through miscalculation. In that sense, who controls the coastal kill chain may well control the fate of Northern Europe's security. <laughs>